Welcome back, friends and foes alike. Uh, it's Band Films Week, and I want to do another thing with the video nasties. I finally watched all 72 of them, and I was going to rank them, but it turns out ranking 72 movies when most of them are just really, really boring is sort of a fool's errand. Like, it's easy to say, these are at the top and these are at the bottom, but then you get in the middle and you're like, is this incredibly boring movie better than this other incredibly boring movie? So, uh, I have instead decided today to do a tier ranking chart, and let me tell you, there is a steep, steep grading curve on this. Um... The S tier I am going to reserve for, like, great movies that ended up on the Video Nasties list. There there are not going to be a lot of S's. This is, like, truly great films that I recommend you go out and see right now. Uh, a tier is going to be movies I enjoyed, movies that are fun, um, movies that are worth watching. Mo movies well worth a watch. Uh, B tier is going to be hilariously bad movies like like movies i enjoy even though they're pretty bad um c tier is gonna be not great movies but movies i could see someone else enjoying they're not they're not the worst but i personally wasn't super into them d tier is going to be for incredibly boring movies that have some small redeeming feature like these are these are not good these are really really boring movies that i do not recommend you watch but there is some redeeming value to them they are not complete nothing movies uh e is gonna be for just straight up the most boring shit like the e is gonna be the biggest category it's just for boring movies okay incredibly boring no fun at all and then f are for movies that are actively hard to sit through uh let's go ahead and jump in these are sort of alphabetical the way the tier chart website added all these movies in is kind of awkward so it's not quite alphabetical but it's basically alphabetical and unfortunately that means the first movie up is a bay of blood which is actually a fucking excellent movie i have talked extensively about a bay of blood uh i i showed it for um movie nights last band move last band films week i showed a bay of blood for movie nights it's just brilliant it's it's one of the best uh, giallo out there. Possibly the best giallo. One of my favorite Italian horror movies. Really well made. Really good story. Really funny ending. Absolute S tier. So it's a little awkward to start off with an S tier when I was just talking about how bad all of these movies are. Uh, luckily next in the rankings is Absurd. Um, also called, like, like the Monster Hunter or something to that effect. And that's gonna go right into the East, because that's just not a very enjoyable movie at all. Why are all these... Why are they all squares? Hold on. There we go. Now you can see the whole poster. And now I can read the titles. <laughs> uh, yeah, absurd going into the E tier. Pretty much nothing interesting or good about it. I, there's a few, like, particularly gory scenes that I kind of liked, but overall, nah. Nah, not an interesting movie. Um, following just behind it, sort of the predecessor to Absurd. I think Absurd is semi-sequel to Anthropophagus. Uh, that that title is so fucking impossible to pronounce. It's also called The Grim Reaper and The Beast. So if you want to call it something else, it's The Grim Reaper, it's The Beast. But uh, Anthropophagus is the title I see it under a lot. And that's going into the D tier because it is not horribly interesting. I don't really like any of the characters in that movie. But the kills are fucking amazing. Like, they, there are great kills in that movie. It's it's almost worth watching just for the kills. So we're putting that in D tier. 
Um, has one of the most infamous scenes in any of the video nasties. Uh, if you've seen it, you know exactly which scene I'm talking about. <laughs> Next on the list, a film called Axe. Alternatively titled uh, The California Axe Murders, something like that. And that's going in the E tier because it is also very boring. Not much of anything happens in that film, like at all. The one, th the one scene I can even remember from that movie... I, can't, I have a vague idea of what happens in it. The only sp scene I specifically remember is a scene in a grocery store where, like, these guys are robbing this store and they shoot at a woman and then you see, like, this red stuff running down her face and then, like, the camera pulls back and they just shot a bottle of ketchup over her head. <laughs> so it's just ketchup. It's a funny shot. The, the, that is the only thing I remember about the entire movie is the ketchup on the lady. Uh, up next, we've got uh, Beast in Heat, which is a Nazi love camp film where the Nazis have created uh, a, a monster that rapes people. That's... why? Why would you do that? And here's the thing. I, I would almost put it in D because of how absurd that premise is, but the titular Beast in Heat barely shows up in the movie. He has a scene near the beginning and another scene near the end, and that's it. That's all of the movie he is in. And it's like, this is an absurd concept. Lean into it. Put it on screen more. It's Because uh, the rest of it is just a fucking Nazi love cam movie. And I, I gotta be honest with you, there's like four or five Nazi love camp movies on this list, and after a while, they all just bleed together. I'm actually gonna scoot over a little. I think I think it would be nicer to uh, have the tier chart over here. We're gonna make a little more room for the tier chart. Uh, up next, <laughs> Herschel Gordon Lewis classic Blood Feast, going straight into the B tier. It's, it's silly, it's goofy, it's hilarious, uh, it's also a very important piece of cinema history. It's the first big gore movie, the first splatter flick. Um, I just, I really love it. B tier. Behind that, we've got Jess Franco's Bloody Moon. Um, Jess Franco was a troublemaker. He's tied with Lucio Fulci for the most video nasties. He directed three, and Fulci also directed three. Although... Franco also wrote a fourth video nasty. He did not direct it, but he did write it, which I think makes him the person who was the most involved with the video nasties list. Uh, Bloody Moon has some interesting stuff going on. I'm kind of stuck between putting it on D or C. I think I'm going to be generous and say C. I might change my mind before we're done here. But right now, C is empty, so we will put Bloody Moon at C. Um, and then we've got The Boogeyman, which I think has John Carradine in it. Um, that's also going to go in C. It's a pretty typical slasher movie with, like, a bit of a supernatural edge to it. Um, there's fun stuff in it. I could definitely see someone liking it. Um, not... not the greatest, but it's it's a fun movie. F fun enough, you know. Unfortunately, its sequel, Boogeyman 2, is going straight into F because Boogeyman 2 fucking sucks. It's, it's the Silent Night, Deadly Night Part 2 school of just reuse all the footage from the first movie. So, like, half of Boogeyman 2 is just footage from Boogeyman 1. And yet, d despite them being directed by the same person, they're, they're both from the same director, they both use... F the, the second movie uses footage from the first movie, but the second movie outright contradicts the lore of the first movie. The, the Boogeyman works in a way he distinctly did not in the first movie. 
Um, and also, it's it's the girl from the first Boogeyman movie is telling the story of the first Boogeyman movie, and she describes scenes that she could not possibly have known were happening. Like, there's a part in Boogeyman 1 where he goes and attacks some random kids across the lake that the main character never even knew existed, and she tells that story in 2, and you're like... That was across the lake. You didn't even know those people. You didn't know that was happening. You can't tell that story. That's if you can even find the real Boogeyman 2. It's online. You gotta search for it online. Because if you get the DVD of Boogeyman 2, you're getting Boogeyman 2 The Redux, which uses footage from the first Boogeyman movie and screenshots from the second Boogeyman movie with director Uli Lamel reprising his role from that movie, basically just describing the plot of the movie. It's basically just him sitting there describing the plot of Boogeyman 2, which is mostly another character describing the plot of Boogeyman 1, so... Boogeyman 2 is at least better than Boogeyman 2 Redux, but Redux is the only version you can find legally. The other one's on YouTube. I'm sure Uli Lamel doesn't care. Uli Lamel's a bad director. He's made some really bad movies. Next, we have The Burning. Um, written by <laughs> the Weinstein Brothers. Um, it was their big break into Hollywood. And The Burning is going right to A tier. I low-key love The Burning. Um, it's... A lot of people say it's like a, a Friday the 13th ripoff, and definitely it was writing like the coattails of Halloween and Friday the 13th. But I really like the characters in The Burning. I think they're all very fun, interesting characters to be around. Uh, and I love the violence in that movie, because it is absurdly violent. <laughs> like, there's a reason it's on the list, and Friday the 13th, isn't um i i i love how violent and gory that movie is and i also think the characters are fun good kills good characters good story that's all i ask for that's all i ask for in a slasher film the burning does it a tier then there's a, a butcher baker nightmare maker which i <laughs> remember basically nothing about this was a, it was a long process to watch all these, and Butcher Baker Nightmare Maker was actually one of the last ones I watched, and yet it was still in one ear, out the other. You know, that one's going right to E tier. You can see already that a lot of movies are going to E tier. They're all so boring. Um, this one's not, though. This is Cannibal Apocalypse, uh, starring... Hmm... Oh, shit. What's that actor's name? John Saxon. John Saxon. Uh, famous for Nightmare on Elm Street. Um, and a couple other really good movies. Enter the Dragon. He's in Enter the Dragon. Um, and that's that's going to C tier. Because it is a fairly interesting movie. Um, it's not a jungle cannibal movie. Like, there's a lot of jungle cannibal movies on this list. And then there's just, like, a cannibal apoc... Actually, we're, we're gonna go through all of the cannibal movies right now, because alphabetical order! <laughs> but, uh, this is not a jungle cannibal movie. This is, like, a zombie movie set in, like, downtown New York, even though it's not really in New York. It's an Italian movie. It was filmed in Italy. But it's, it's a zombie movie set in, like, New York, where the, these cops have to, like fight zombies. It's interesting. It's pretty interesting. So we'll, we'll go C tier with it. Um, Cannibal Ferox. I said this in the Cannibal Holocaust video, but I am way more upset by Cannibal Ferox than I am Cannibal Holocaust because Cannibal Holocaust... Yes, the production of that film was unethical. They did some very bad things to animals that they should not have done. I, I will agree to that wholeheartedly. But it was original, and it had a point. It was going somewhere with something. There are aspects of Cannibal Holocaust you can compliment. There are no aspects of Cannibal Ferox you can compliment. It's a straight-up rip-off 
of Cannibal Holocaust. Okay? And they still tortured animals! And it's like... Torturing animals for an original movie is bad. Torturing animals for a ripoff is somehow worse. It's somehow an extra layer of insulting. So yeah, Cannibal Ferox, straight to the F. Um, Cannibal Holocaust, hmm. Hmm. I'm gonna put it in C. I'm gonna put Cannibal Holocaust in C. Um. People might disagree with me on that one. People might say it should be lower. It is slow. It's really, really, really slow. Um, but it has a point. It has things to say. I don't know. I, I talked... I mean, I did a full commentary for, for the movie. You can listen to my commentary with or without the movie playing. Or you can watch the edited video I did um, with Michael. That's actually one of the more popular videos on this channel for some reason. But uh, please enjoy me watching Cannibal Holocaust. Up next, there's Cannibal Man, and I'm not gonna lie to you, the first time I watched Cannibal Man, I was thinking of putting it, like, F-tier, because I was so disappointed by it. I've come around a little, I'm like, okay, it's not, like, unwatchable, it's just incredibly boring, and also, the tamest video nasty. Like, this movie is... So, like, insultingly tame. Like, like, this is as violent as, like, Psycho or Peeping Tom from the 60s. There's barely any violence in this movie at all. This movie got condemned because it had the word cannibal in the title. That's it. They're like, oh, it's a cannibal movie? Banned. Video nasty. It's so, so tame. And that's... Part of me wanted to put it in the F tier because I'm like, this isn't even gross. This isn't even disgusting. But I'm like, all right, all right, you know, I it's watchable. It's not it's not an unwatchable mess. But it's still it's like the lowest E tier movie. Okay, I did not enjoy Cannibal Man. Uh, Cannibal Terror. It is. A fucking jungle cannibal movie. It's going into E tier. It nothing special at all. Um, Contamination, Contamination, which started as like it started as a fake sequel. It's gonna be a fake alien sequel, and in fact, the alternate title for it is Alien Contamination. Uh, clearly a bit of an alien ripoff, but I am going to put it all the way up at C tier because I do think it has some very impressive violence. I think there's some very fun, entertaining deaths in this movie. Um, it's this, this could make a fun watch, you know? Like, if, if you're hanging out with some friends and you're drunk and you want to watch a really violent movie, you could do worse than Contamination. It's fun. It's a fun movie. Um, we'll, we'll go C tier with that one. Uh, up next, Dead and Buried. Hmm. I almost feel like... <laughs> Here's the thing. It belongs, like, B tier, but I said B tier was for, like, funny bad movies. It's better than all the other C tier movies. It's, it's, this is the best C tier movie. Uh, but... It is still going in C tier because I didn't think I don't think it's good enough to go in A, but it's not funny bad enough to go in B, so it has to go in C tier. And mm, in fact, that that makes me want to move. Uh, I'm I am gonna move Bloody Moon down to D, just because Dead and Buried is way better than Bloody Moon. It it deserves to be at least a tier ahead of Bloody Moon. Uh, Dead and Buried is interesting. It's uh, like, the town with a secret movie, and that secret continues to get worse as the movie goes on. <laughs> right, like, it starts out as like, oh, this town is doing this thing. Oh, this town is doing this thing because of this. Oh, this town is doing that because of this, because of this. There's so many layers to the bad things happening in this town. Um, apparently Edgar Wright is a fan of it, and it definitely gives me some hot fuzz vibes, 
plot wise um not so much like the fast paced action style of hot fuzz but like it definitely reminds me of the story of hot fuzz like the mystery of hot fuzz so uh we'll go c tier with it 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 probably deserves better than that but I, I don't think I can put it any higher. Uh, Delirium. I straight up do not remember watching Delirium. Apparently I did. I gave it a rating on IMDb, and I wouldn't have done that if I hadn't seen it. But... I remember, like, I watched the trailer for the movie, and I'm like, okay, I watched this movie, but... I could not tell you a damn thing that happens in it. This is an incredibly boring movie. And also, you can kind of see it in this picture. I'll pull up a bigger picture of it. Right here. On, on, on the box cover, they just, for some reason, have its IMDb rating. Four stars. That's not a good rating. That's four out of ten. That's a 40% on IMDb. I guess they're hoping people think it's four stars out of four, but <laughs> first off, why put your IMDb rating on the poster on, on the box cover? Obviously, this was not on the original theatrical poster, but on at least one DVD release, they slapped the IMDb rating on the cover. <laughs> so that's Delirium. Uh, Devil Hunter, another Jess Franco movie. Uh, it is a Jungle Cannibal movie, but I'm putting it in D tier, slightly higher than the other Cannibal movies, because there's actually a little more going on in Devil Hunter. In Devil Hunter, they resurrect this, like, demon, and he's running around. It, it's like a, a Jungle Cannibal ceremony to resurrect this demon creature and that's an interesting enough development i think it deserves slightly higher placement than the others it's it's something memorable about the film because i did kind of like the demon in that movie uh up next don't go in the house one of many don't movies to get banned um this one i'm gonna put in c tier because there's some very good special effects in the movie. It's got some really good special effects, some very good camera work, and it's also a movie about a serial killer that uses a flamethrower, and there's just something really fascinating about a flamethrower. That's, that's not a typical slasher villain weapon. So C tier for, for Don't Go in the House. You can actually visit the house from don't you, you can go into the house you aren't supposed to go into it's like a it's it's like an office for a city in new jersey like like it's it's the s town central building what's the word i am looking for <laughs> it's a government building the government owns the house that you don't go into so you can go visit the house from Don't Go in the House. And go in the house from Don't Go in the House. Um, maybe not right now. Maybe because of COVID. But then again, COVID's kind of ending, so... Um, don't Go in the Woods. Alternatively titled Don't Go in the Woods Alone. Going right up to B tier. It's bad. It's very silly. <laughs> it's, it's a very funny bad movie. Because it starts off, it's sort of acting like uh, a Bigfoot horror movie. Because there were a lot of Bigfoot horror movies in the 60s, and, or in the 70s and 80s for some reason. Um, but then it turns out it's not Bigfoot, it's just a really hairy guy in a hairy jacket that's been murdering people. <laughs> I, I don't know. Very absurd, very silly movie. Uh, I think I have it on the docket for movie nights, so I'll probably be, we'll, we'll probably be watching that one. Next we've got Don't Go, Don't Go Near the Park. Not, Don't Go in the Park, Don't Go Near the Park. Um, this one's getting D tier. 
for the pure and simple reason that the villains in the movie are cavemen. <laughs> they were they're cavemen from prehistoric times and they are cursed to like live forever and like hunt human flesh. So they they've taken up residence in like this cave and and it's set in like the 70s or 80s and <laughs> it's just about these uh cavemen who've been cursed to live forever and who eat human flesh so that's that one's getting a d tier for that reason and that reason alone i can't really tell you much else that happens in the movie it's pretty dull despite an interesting premise but interesting premise that'll get you up to d tier don't look in the basement. Um, I'm going to be live streaming this one later this week. And it's not good. It's like, honestly, kind of hard to sit through. But it's public domain, so we're watching it. <laughs> I, I will bear the how painfully bad it is because it is public domain. Um, actually, you know what? I... I I have some stuff to say about Don't Go in the Basement, but I think I'll save it since I'm live streaming it. Uh, Dorm That Drips Blood. Hmm. I, uh, hmm. Is that D or is that E? Because it's not, it's not horribly interesting, but I do remember moments from it. Um, it's like the better version of April Fool's Day. Because people actually die in this one. Hmm. I guess I guess D is looking a little sparse. We'll put it in D, but I might come back and drop it lower. Uh, Driller Killer. I have live streamed in the past because it is also public domain, and we're gonna put that one in D tier as well. It's. There's like a nice like punk rock energy to it that I kind of like, but it's ultimately a very slow movie where not a lot happens until near the end. Now, near the end, things do ramp up, and I, I do enjoy the ending a bit, but it's it's pretty slow. It's not a, it's not a great movie. Um, then there's uh, <laughs> Eaten Alive from Toby Hooper. The director of Texas Chainsaw Massacre, uh, it's which is about uh, a hotel owner who pushes people into a pit with a hungry crocodile to kill them. So that's going all the way up to C tier. That's a very fun idea for a slasher, because he's not using a weapon at all. He's he's feeding people to an alligator. It's fun. It's clever. I'm pretty sure it only ended up on the list because Toby Hooper directed it and they were mad at him for making Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Even though Texas Chainsaw Massacre was not one of the video nasties. Um, up next, Evil Dead, which of course, you know, uh, I gotta scroll up because I can't get all of this on screen at once. All the way up to A tier. Evil Dead, one of my favorite movies. It is unquestionably the best video nasty like i don't even think that's a competition i i think if if you took anyone who's seen any substantial percentage of the video nasties and asked them what the best one was most of them are gonna say evil dead because evil dead is a great movie <laughs> i love evil dead so much s tier pure s tier gotta be there uh, Evil Speak, featuring Clint Howard. I think it was his... If, if not his first horror movie, his first big horror movie. Um, that's gonna go up to C tier as well. That's pretty fun. He, he, like, gets satanic powers from a computer. Um, so I, I definitely see... Uh, definitely some enjoyment there for Evil Speak. Um... It also has the glorious line, Hocus Pocus Satan, um, which is supposed to be a scare. Like, he, this, the, one kid is hiding and he jumps out at another kid and he's like, Hocus Pocus Satan! Which I then quoted in one of my videos. 
Faces of Death. Oh boy, that's a hard one. Mm. Faces of Death is one of those movies I think is far, far more interesting to talk about than actually watch. I think... I th I, th I think I'm going F tier with that. Nah, you know what? I'm, t I'm putting it in E tier. It's not... There are some really unwatchable scenes in that movie, but it's also kind of buck wild enough to make up for... The really gross scenes. Um, for those of you unfamiliar, Faces of Death is basically a movie that purports to be a documentary on various crazy ways people have died. And it's got real footage of people dying. It doesn't. It does not have any real footage of people dying. It does have real footage of an autopsy. <laughs> which is... Really gross to watch, and that is not the only gross part of the movie. But it's very fake and hokey and and over the top in places that it almost makes up for those moments that are just so disgusting I, you can't look at the screen. Uh, like I said, definitely a more interesting movie to talk about than to actually watch. Fight for your life. God damn, I wish I liked this movie more. I think I'm going to put it at D tier, but, like, Fight for Your Life is a movie with a message, and it's a pretty controversial message, I guess. It's a message you don't see a lot in movies, because it's sort of a, it's a black exploitation film. It's a, it's a home invasion movie, too. It's like the these... Three escapees from, uh, these three guys break out of jail and they break into this guy's house and hold him and his family hostage. And the, the lead criminal is just like super racist and he's holding this black family hostage. And the, the father of the black family is like a preacher and he's all about like peace and nonviolence and all that. And it's, it's sort of this weird, like... Hey, black people, the Christians are holding you down, you know? <laughs> like, like the, the Christians are, are what's holding you back from, like, overthrowing the white man. And it's like, mmm, mmm, that's spicy. That's a hot take. Um, unfortunately, it's not a very interesting movie. A very interesting movie, on the other hand... Uh, Andy Warhol's, it wasn't directed by him, it was produced by him, but he, he gets credit for it anyway. Paul Morrissey's Andy Warhol's Flesh for Frankenstein. That's going all the way up to S tier. Yeah, that is an amazing movie. <laughs> that movie is fucking buck wild. That is an insane movie. Like... <laughs> I love it. I love it so much. And there's a sort of sequel to it, uh, Blood for Dracula, that is just not nearly as interesting. Blood for Dracula didn't end up on the Video Nasties list, and, like... It's not as interesting. Not, it's not as fucking wild as Frankenstein. Um, Flesh for Frankenstein, amazing movie. It is... That is on the docket for movie nights. That is, like... Within, like, the next two or three months. Actually, I think that's on the docket for July. That might literally be, like, two movie nights away. I'd, I'd have to look at my schedule, which is on my phone, which I'm using to record this, but... I think I'm planning on showing that one in July. <laughs> Maybe I'll just bump it up to July so that I won't be wrong in this. But yeah, Flesh for Frankenstein, I love it. Uh, Frozen Screams, I have talked about previously. I showed it last year at uh, movie night for, for Band Films Week. I'm gonna put that one D tier as well, because it's kind of silly. It's kind of, like, poorly made enough that it deserves a little more credit than the boring nonsense of E tier. 
but it's also not a very good movie. So, D tier. Uh, Toby Hooper's The Fun House. Man. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I. Ooh. I want to put this in A tier. Even though it, it's, it's very tame, it's probably behind Cannibal Man for the tamest video nasty. That's another one where I feel like this is only on the list because you had beef with Toby Hooper. You're mad at Toby Hooper because he didn't put enough violence in Texas Chainsaw Massacre for you to ban it. So you're going to ban his other film, The Fun House, but it's, it's pretty enjoyable. I actually kind of liked The Fun House. Um, I I don't know though, man. A tier seems really high, but you know what? There's like nothing in the A tier so far, so we're gonna go ahead and put it in A tier, right? With the burning, um, that's generous. That's a generous A tier, but I did like that movie pretty well, so fuck it, it can stay. The Gestapo's Last Orgy, another Nazi love camp movie. Uh, the only thing I remember about this movie is that it has the best alternate title in history. Caligula Reincarnated as Hitler. I love that title. I don't like anything else about that movie. It's really boring. The Ghastly Ones. Oof. That's... All right, I'm going to be nice to the ghastly ones and put it at C tier. Because I, I do see how someone could like that. I do think most people are not going to like that. But I understand if you do like it. It's kind of, it's interesting. It's, it's an interesting little movie. It's odd, is the thing. It's, I mean, it's one of the earliest. It was like 1968. And there are barely any 60s movies on this list. So it's one of the earliest, and so, like, a lot of the tropes that these other movies have are not present in the ghastly ones. It sort of predates everything that would come after it, <laughs> like, to, to the point that it, it it's fairly original in its presentation. It's not copying a thousand other movies. Let's see. Hell of the Living Dead. Also called Night of the Zombies. Also called Virus. Also called The Gates of Hell. Also called probably two or three other things. I might have more alternate titles than any other movie I know of. I think it was also called Zombie 4. Um, Hell of the Living Dead is the title I prefer. Because that's a strong title. Although it probably doesn't deserve that strong of a title. Um, I'm gonna put it in D tier because there is stuff about it that I can remember and maybe kind of liked. Cause I, there's like a weird, like terrorist subplot in this zombie movie, which makes no sense. I, f I think I read somewhere that it was filmed for like a different movie, but then that movie never got made. So they're like, ah, put the terrorist stuff in the zombie movie. Who cares? I might be wrong about that one. Do not hold me to that. That might not be true, but I think I remember reading that somewhere. That might have been a different movie. Um, after that, Lucio Fulci's House by the Cemetery. We're going to put that one in C tier as well. Um... A uh, Fulci classic. Damn near incomprehensible. <laughs> like, it's it's not an easy plot to follow, but it does have a lot of interesting stuff going on. Gotta give it credit for that. It is still Lucio Fulci. House on the Edge of the Park, which I almost confused Don't Go Near the Park with. Um, so it was almost a lot harsher on Don't Go Near the Park than I should have been. House on the Edge of the Park is an F-tier movie. Um, it's basically a Last House on the Left ripoff. Not fully, it's not the complete same plot, but it, it's more of a home invasion movie than Last House on the Left is, but it is 
a lot of the same plot elements from Last House on the Left. And I mean even the title, House on the Edge of the Park. It's about a house and its location, so... Clearly it was trying to cash in on Last House on the Left at least a little bit, and it's just really, like, gross and offensive and not fun at all. So we're going F-tier with that. Up next, Human Experiments. What a boring title. What a boring movie. <laughs> it's a women in prison movie. Um... And they, they experiment on the women in the prison, but... It's, I mean, there are much, much, much better women in prison movies than this. Um, so, yeah, that one's going to E tier. I Miss You Hugs and Kisses. What a fucking title. You know, you're going through, like, the, the list of, of video nasties and it's like... Blood Feast, Cannibal Apocalypse, Axe, uh, Bloody Moon. I miss you hugs and kisses. Um, unfortunately, it is a movie that is about as soft as its title. It's not very interesting. It's, I mean, it's about, like, a woman who murders her husband. And then kind of tries to cover it up. It's pretty tame. It is definitely on the tamer end of Video Nasties, and it's also not very interesting. There are a lot of movies with similar plots that are much, much better than that. I Spit on Your Grave. Uh, divisive, divisive movie. I'm putting in an F tier. That's gonna upset some people. Some people are gonna get mad at me for putting I Spit on Your Grave in F tier, but... I think... It goes too far. I think it spins in way too much time on something that could have been much, much shorter and had the same impact. Right? Like, at some point, it's... You're, you're not even making a movie anymore. You're, ju you're like, rubbing our faces in it. You know, you're, it's, it's, it's gone past the point of just exploitation. It's gone past the point of just a disturbing scene. You're just rubbing our faces in it, and it's not fun to watch. Uh, F tier. I will disagree with the people who say it's the worst movie ever made, because it's not even the worst video nasty. But, there are, there are redeeming factors about it, even. There are parts of the movie I kind of enjoy. But, I just think... You know, a 20-minute rape scene is excessive. Moving on. Inferno. Um, sort of a follow-up to Suspiria. Um, and I'm not the biggest Suspiria fan. Um, I might even like Inferno a little more. <laughs> because it's... It's a lot more surreal. There's... A lot less to try to process with Inferno. You can just sort of go, oh, okay, it's weird. <laughs> just sort of sit back and enjoy the visuals, you know? It's, that's, that's the type of movie Inferno is. Inferno is like, let's get high as shit and just sit back and enjoy the trippy visuals. Um, so yeah, we're, we're going C tier for that one. Island of Death going right up here on the, uh, the, the funny bad movie tier because it's, it's a filthy movie, but it's very tongue in cheek about how filthy it is. And I kind of love it. Uh, this is, I, the third one I did for, for movie night last year and Boy, it's just like every offensive thing you can cram into a movie. And I kind of like it. Uh, Killer Nun. Uh, no fun at all. Very dull. The, the only thing I remember about Killer Nun is that throughout the film she seduces both men and women. And then there's a point where she's at a restaurant and she's like sitting in... in like a booth and the the padding on the booth 
is the colors of the bisexual flag. And I'm like, ah, huh, it's the bisexual flag. Like, 20 years before the bisexual flag was a thing in this movie with a bisexual character. Not a good bisexual character. Like, really exploitative bisexual character. In fact, I think I used clips of this as as my my visual for a, an example of a bad bisexual representation in in my video on bisexual representation killer nun was a bad example of it um just not a f enjoyable movie at all really not not very fun um and I mean, among non exploitation films, even like there's some really fun, if really bad ones, you know. Uh, Satanico Pandemonium, I think, is really funny, <laughs> a lot better than Killer Nun. Last House on the Left. Boy, man, gee whiz, I hmm. I guess I'm going D tier with Last House on the Left. That's uh That's a hard one. I'll I'll be honest. It's got a legacy, it's got a reputation and I'll I'll grant it that it was sort of ahead of its time, but man is it not fun to sit through. Although it's a lot more fun to sit through than Late Night Trains, uh, alternatively titled, like, Last Train, or, uh, it's a new house, new Last House on the Left, another alternate title for it. It's a Last House on the Left ripoff, and not even a very good one. Uh, the only remarkable thing about it is that Inira Morricone did the soundtrack, but... Other than that, not a good movie. F tier. It's it's boring. It's a ripoff of a movie that's already kind of hard to watch. So the fact that this is a dull ripoff with none of what made the original movie so entertaining. F tier. Fuck that. <laughs> Living Dead at Manchester Morgue. Am I putting too much stuff in the same three tiers? Yes. That's just how the video nasties are. Uh, Living Dead at Manchester Moor, going up to C tier. Interesting little movie, fun little zombie movie, a little outside, uh, what you typically see in zombie movies, but not my favorite. There's definitely stuff to enjoy about it. I definitely see why some people like it. Um, so, yeah, C tier. C tier is a good place for it. Love Camp 7. This is the Love Camp movie I'm gonna put above the others. Just for being first. It was the first Nazi love camp movie. So if you're gonna watch one, that's gonna be the one I recommend. Because it is at least original. Madhouse. Um, we're going up to D tier with this one. It's... I could see some people liking it, maybe... But it's it's kind of dull. It's kind of predictable. It's it's very cliche. It's I don't know. It's just not a very clever movie. It's not a very interesting movie. Um, it's got elements to it that I don't dislike. That that there's even stuff about it I kind of like. I I could see someone taking elements from this film and then putting them into a much better film. I'll say that. Man from Deep River, Jungle Cannibal movie. Actually, I think it was the first Jungle Cannibal movie. Um, also called Sacrifice. I think that's what the Blu-ray I have is called. Sacrifice. But, uh, yeah, no. Uh, it's, it's going in E tier because it's just... It's a Jungle Cannibal movie and they none of them are different. None of them are different at all. Mardi Gras Massacre, the last video nasty I watched for the first time, at least. I have seen video nasties more recently than this, but they were all rewatches. So, in my effort to watch all of the video nasties, this was the last one I watched, and it was like a breath of fresh air. 
I'm going C tier with it, but that that might be generous, but I was just at the point where like I had watched all these fucking movies that just sucked. And I watched Mardi Gras Massacre and I'm like, oh man, they're trying. There's interesting things happening. I'm not immediately bored by this movie. So you know what? C tier for you, Mardi Gras Massacre. Maybe if I had watched it earlier, I wouldn't feel that way, but fuck it. Fuck it. I, I liked it well enough when I did watch it. Slave of the Cannibal God, also called Mountain of the Cannibal God. It's a cannibal movie. Uh, Night of the Bloody Apes. Whew, what an odd one. Almost, I, I don't think it's quite funny enough to go on the funny bad tier, but I will give it D tier for being a little funny bad. Because <laughs> it's, it's a strange, strange movie. So yeah, we'll give that one D tier. Night of the Demon, on the other hand, I think I will put on the uh, funny bad tier. Because there are some ridiculous things happening in that movie. <laughs> I'm worried people are going to get the wrong idea with this because C tier almost belongs above B tier because all of B tier is bad movies. But they're all bad movies I enjoy a lot more than what's on C tier. <laughs> C tier has better movies than B tier, but B tier has more enjoyable movies. Uh, Night School... I'm going to give Night School D tier, because while it is a pretty plain, unremarkable slasher movie, there are a handful of really good scenes in that movie. Um, I mean, there's some, there's a really good kill where, like, uh, the, like, this guy's killing off all these teachers. One of the teachers is on a like the 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 merry-go-round not the merry-go-round maybe the mer the the thing on the playground that spins not the one with the horses the horses is a merry-go-round that's a carousel what's the the little thing on the playground that spins i think might also be called a merry-go-round but she's on one of those just spinning around spinning around spinning around and then the killer runs up and just like sticks the knife out and decapitates her and her head just goes flying lands right into a bucket <laughs> that's really good kill uh and then there's like a, a the the killer sort of mo across the whole movie is that they've they're putting the the women they've killed heads into water like they they've been found in like buckets of water or in like a pond or something so he puts the heads in a container of water and we see him kill this, like, uh, the, this cook who's working late at this restaurant. And then, you know, the head chef comes in the next day and he's like, Oh, didn't clean up anything in here. What an awful woman. Where is she? And as he's cleaning, he, like, goes over to the sink and both of the sinks are full of water. And he's, like, draining the sinks and you're like, Oh, God, he's gonna find the head. He's gonna find the head. It's not in either of the sinks. And you're just like, where's the head? Where is this fucking head? And he keeps, like, he empties out a bucket, no head. And you're just like, where is the fucking head? That's a good scene. That's a really good scene. Without that scene, this would be an E-tier movie. <laughs> Possession. Possession is going all the way up. If I can get it there. There we go. All the way up to S tier. Possession is fucking excellent. It's also very, very difficult to find in America. Legally. Um, I watched it legally. This was not... I Listen, I watched one or two of these in less than legal ways because they're not easy to find. But Possession I did watch legally. I did pay for the Blu-ray, which 
was a little pricey, but I think it was worth it. I'm glad I have the Blu-ray now because Possession is a really good movie. Um, it's one of Gaspar Noé's favorite movies, apparently, and you can see that, definitely. He references it in Climax. A, a very surrealist horror movie that's sort of about, like, like, the horrors of growing apart from someone you love, like the horrors of divorce. So, yeah. Yeah. It's a... It's, it's, psychedelic horror movie about divorce i really enjoy it it's a really fun movie uh that absolutely deserving of s tier great movie if you can get your hands on it i recommend you watch it man i have put nothing in a tier god damn i might move up some of these c tiers uh you know what dead and buried you're going to a tier dead and buried gets to be a tier See what else we got. The Slayer. <sighs> this is another one I want to put in F tier because of how boring it is. But I also want to save F tier for just like pains to like it pains me to watch F tier movies, whereas E tier movies, I feel nothing. Um <sighs> I guess it belongs in E tier. I guess it belongs in E tier. But it's so... It's so boring. And it makes no sense. <laughs> it's like... Like two people die in this movie. In fact, I take it back. This this is the second tamest. Cannibal Man is still the tamest. This is the second tamest. Uh, because... Goddamn, fucking no one dies, and they're all very boring. Well, okay, actually, there is one really good death in the movie. But other than that, most of them are pretty boring deaths, and it's only, like, three characters. Um, and the ending makes no fucking sense. Not that that's a turnoff to me. There are horror movies where the ending makes no fucking sense that I really enjoy, but it's just, like, when the movie's been this boring... And this, like, nothing happening, and then the ending just doesn't even make sense. You're just like, alright, fuck this. Did not enjoy the Slayer. Not at all. Snuff. I did a whole review of Snuff, so I bet you can guess that it is going in the funny bad tier. B tier. B for B movie tier. Um... Snuff is really funny. Uh, l like I said in the video I did on it, it's sort of like the perfect movie for when you're like 15, 16 years old and you have your friends over and you're like, oh, you guys want to watch like a sick movie, a really gross movie. It's this, it's, it's like, I think it's rated X and it was rated X in America in the 70s. If it was re-rated, it would almost certainly be an R. It is not that gross. But just like, oh, this movie it was like banned for so long and like legend has it there's like a real murder at the end of the movie. But then you watch it and it's not gross. It's just kind of silly. <laughs> so it's sort of like it's, like, got this reputation that's, like, through the roof, and then it's just, like, actually fun to watch. <laughs> like, it's, it, it, it's, it's not, you know, it's not Cannibal Holocaust. It's not, uh, Sallow or, or Slaughtered Vomit Dolls or something where, like, it has this mythical status and you watch and you're like, wow, this is really fucking gross. It's just a very silly, very fun movie, and I really enjoy it. Uh, what's next? SS Experiment Love Camp. Well, uh, you can guess where that one's going. Dario Argento's Tenebrae. Ah, finally. Something to go into the A tier. <laughs> um, yeah, Tenebrae is uh, one of Argento's classics. Uh, cl classic giallo right there. Um, lots of good deaths, good moments. There's a really funny scene where, like, 
a guy is just, like, he has his arm, like, resting on a table, but he's still pointing a gun at someone, and then this axe just, like, crashes through the window and cuts his arm off, and he just, like, bleeds all, <laughs> and you can tell, like, the hand is totally fake, and they cut it off, and then he just, blood everywhere. It's just a tube of blood. <laughs> it's It's amazing. I love it. Uh, Tenebrae, very enjoyable movie, one of Argento's classics. And speaking of classics of Italian horror, uh, Lucio Fulci's The Beyond, also going all the way up to A tier. Um, sort of a zombie movie? Uh, but maybe not totally? <laughs> um... It's parts of part of his Gates of Hell trilogy, which I believe House of the Cemetery, House House by the Cemetery is as well. Um, the Beyond is the much better of the two, and it's it's a very fun zombie movie. Uh, lots of great effects, lots of great moments, lots a lot of good horror stuff, and the ending is just like amazing. Just an amazing, very, like, almost eldritch ending to the movie. Almost, like, like cosmic horror ending to the movie. I don't know. I really like The Beyond. Toolbox Murders. You know what? This one is going to F. This one is the most boring. This is the most boring video nasty. Toolbox Murders. Yeah, no, I'm I'm giving it F. I'm giving it F for being too boring. It's like like it's the most boring. The Slayer and Cannibal Man, they're boring, but there's like little moments I can hold on to. There's nothing I can hold on to about the toolbox murders. It's it's just boring. F tier. Toxic Zombies. Uh much like Night of the Bloody Apes, I think I'm gonna put it in D tier just for being kind of funny bad. <laughs> Like, there's there's a level of cheese to the movie that, uh, you know, makes it more bearable, and I'm I'm not gonna put it all the way up at the B tier, but it 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 deserves a D tier at least for how, uh, wild and off color it is. Uh, Trauma, starring Udo Kier. The only British video nasty. I said in my video on the video nasties that none of them were British. I am wrong. Trauma was British. Um, also titled Expose was British. And that one's going in the E tier because it is very boring. Uh, unhinged. Woof. <laughs> also very boring. Um, even more boring than Trauma. Definitely down there with... Pro probably Unhinged is even more boring than Cannibal Man and the Slayer. Those are... I'm gonna say that's like number two on the boring list. Uh, Visiting Hours. Visiting Hours is one that almost makes me want to split E tier into two different tiers. Uh, because there's... There's boring movies like Unhinged, where nothing happens. And then there's more boring movies like Visiting Hours, where it's like... It, things are happening, it's just very cliche and predictable. Right? Like, Visiting Hours deserves more credit than Unhinged. More is going on in Visiting Hours than Unhinged. But it's a very unoriginal, unremarkable movie. But... Just do not like it. it. Despite Michael Ironside playing the villain. I like Michael Ironside, but man, this movie's not interesting. One interesting thing about uh, Visiting Hours, however, is that it was produced by 20th Century Fox, which means Disney now owns this video nasty. <laughs> this is a video nasty owned by the Disney Corporation. Uh, Werewolf and the Yeti, starring Mr. Paul Nashi, famous for playing a werewolf in many, many movies. I think it's actually the only Paul Nashi werewolf movie I've seen, which is probably not something I should admit. I've seen one or two other Paul Nashi movies, but I don't think I've seen him in anything else where he's a werewolf. 
Um, that's going up to D tier. Not horribly interesting, but it is, you know, a vampire, or excuse me, a werewolf and a yeti fighting. So, <laughs> it's got that going for it. Which Who Came From The Sea? Um, you guys probably already know I really like Which Who Came From The Sea. I think the hard part here is, is it A tier or is it S tier? Um, hmm. I think I'm gonna go S. Nah, I'm gonna go A. It's, it is kind of cheesy. It's a little too cheesy for me to put in S, but... It's, it's fun. Uh, I've talked, I talked about it at length in a Movie Nights video. Um, it's this weird, like, surrealist, feminist horror movie, but maybe not. <laughs> uh, it's, it's weird, it's surreal, it clearly has something to say. Um, which I, I appreciate about it, but, um, it's, it's just a little cheesy. The performances are not super great. Some of the kills are a little over the top for, like, something you want to hold up as, like, ah, oh, this is brilliant, a brilliant piece of, uh, surrealist filmmaking. It's an, it's a hidden gem for sure. It's a hidden gem, but I, I don't think it's... Quite S tier material. Jess Franco's Women Behind Bars. Um, Jess Franco is kind of odd because he'll do like half parodies. He'll he'll do something where it's like a little tongue in cheek, but not super tongue in cheek. It's just kind of. It's the same thing that always happens in that genre of film. Just, just Franco kind of winks at the audience every now and again. <laughs> uh, Women Behind Bars is like that. Um, also, uh, uh, Devil Hunter is like that, although I think Devil Hunter has a little more going on. And Bloody Moon's kind of like that, too. Um, but Women Behind Bars, uh, of the three video nasties Jess Franco directed, is by far the most... The, the, the least interesting. It's just... It's women in prison. That sure is what that movie is. <laughs> Even if he turns to the camera and winks, it's... That does not stop it from being a very cliche women behind bars movie. Uh... Then we have Lucio Fulci's Zombie. Which is going right into the A tier. Classic. Classic movie. Uh, in this movie, a zombie fights a shark. If you're not down with that shit, get the fuck out of my face. I love zombies so much. Incredible movie. And finally, I don't know how this ended up as the last one. <laughs> But here it is, Nightmare, alternatively titled Nightmare in a Damaged Brain. Um, and I, I am going to give that one C tier. Um, it, I would like to rewatch this because there's stuff about it that sticks out in my mind that makes me go like, I might like this a little more on a rewatch. It might be worth checking out a second time. But as of right now, I'm going C tier with it. Um, I I I didn't like it that much on my first viewing, but I, I it has stuck in my mind well enough that I'm thinking I don't know maybe that could be a decent movie if I gave it another shot. So decrease the size of this. Maybe not. Oh, well. Hold on, there's a save download button. Let's save. So, there it is. My Video Nasties tier chart. Clearly heavier on the bottom than the top. There is a bell curve to it, at least. Like, not, not as many S's, a little more A's, a little more B's, more C's, more D's, more E's, and then 
back down again for Fs, although, yeah, it's, it's a bell curve, but it's not quite a centered bell curve, since D and E have way more than, you know, F or A, B, A, 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 S, A, and B. I think there's probably more D and E than there are in the top three layers. So, there it is. Um, my Video Nasties tier list. I will try to save this tier list and put it down in the description if you want to do your own Video Nasties tier list. Although I recognize most people have not seen a lot of the Video Nasties. So, it'll be down there for those of you who feel you've seen enough Video Nasties to fill one out. Um, and until next time... Happy Band Films Week.